what I want you to do real quick. I want you to think about something that the enemy thought you were going to come out of. And I just want you to lean over to somebody and say, he just keeps on He just keeps on making it. I, mean, I really wish, I know we got to push this program, but listen, I really wish I had 30 people to really think about that thing. And just overlook how tired you feel right now. And just start thinking about how many doors he keeps on opening. Because I found out the more you thank him, I found out the more you thank him.
put those hands together and let's bless the Lord. Amen. We do give honor to God and to all in the house, and we appreciate the Greater New Bible Way Church family. Come on, let's say amen to them and give them a hand. Pastor Dennis Rogers. Amen. We give honor to our jurisdictional president, Bishop Anderson. On Saturday, July the 13th, is the Bishop's Banquet. Amen. Come on, put those hands together. The Bishop's Banquet will be held on Saturday, July the 13th. It will be held at 4 p.m. If you do not have your tickets, please see your jurisdictional, or excuse me, your district superintendent. Amen? Amen. You all know who your district superintendents are, right? Yes. So we want to go and see them so that we can get a ticket and make sure that we're there to support Bishop and his wife on that day. Come on, give them a hand. Again, it will begin at 4 p.m. at the Woody Sherwood Forest. The seating starts at 3 o'clock, and it's going to be at 1111 West Maryland Avenue in Sherwood, Arkansas. And this is our opportunity to give back uh, to our bishop and his lovely companion. Then on July the 24th through the 28th is the, is the Holy Convocation of the Arkansas Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. And uh, I'm going to that one. We just want to highlight that before we come to just one more that is local. Brothers and sisters, we're going to uh, be in our convocation. And thank God on Wednesday we will have as a speaker the evangelist Joyce Rogers. The giant slayer. Amen. Thursday we'll be, we'll be honoring we'll be honoring Bishop D. L. Lindsay on that night, and Bishop Jewel Withers and the Arkansas First Jurisdiction will be with us. Let's say man for them. On Friday morning will be the communion celebration, and on that day Bishop is reaching out to the state of Louisiana. I believe he is from Louisiana East and Third Jurisdiction. None other than Bishop Alfonso Denson will be the speaker. Thank God for him on Friday morning. And then on Friday night, a general board member from the state of Michigan will be with us, Bishop J. Drew Shear. Saturday will be the picnic and the concert. Sunday will be Sunday school. And we all know that we're going to be there at Sunday school, I believe, beginning at 9 o'clock. And then at 1045, we will be processing into the official day worship. And we will hear our bishop, our jurisdictional prelate, on that day. So we don't want to miss the holy convocation. Uh, if you'd like to participate and, and stay for the week, you can go to the Arlington Hotel. Let me give you this number. Uh, because we sold out of the headquarters hotel. Isn't that a good thing? Amen. And the Arlington Hotel is available, and they have some rooms uh, that, that they're doing for the same price. I think maybe even just a little bit lower. But if you call the Arlington Hotel and tell them that you're with the Church of God in Christ, they will uh, reserve your room. That number is 501-623-7771. Again, that's 501-623-7771. Amen? Amen? Now, getting close to home, June the 20th. Uh, 6th through the 28th, right here, Greater New Bible Week. Come on, let's hear it for the Women's Convention. Amen. And we know the supervisor of the Department of Women is none other than Supervisor Jeanette Abraham Watkins. Come on, let's hear it for her. Amen. So you do not want to miss that meeting. I know that we're enjoying the AIM Convention, and brothers and sisters, we want to do the very best that we can. We have financial obligations. They have already, we've already been told of our financial obligations, so all the superintendents are asked to go to the office to take care of those financial obligations and the nightly offerings. Amen? Amen. Brothers and sisters, would you please stand at this time? We are so blessed. We really are blessed to have as our jurisdictional prelate somebody that represents us very well. Amen. For the past 10 years, he has served as our jurisdictional prelate. And even before then, he helped and assisted Bishop Lindsay. He was the first administrative assistant. He served as the second administrative assistant. He served as the state evangelism president for many, many years, a district superintendent. And the Lord blessed us to be able to have him as our jurisdictional prelate. 
Amen. 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 I can say from personal experience that Bishop Anderson represents us well. I don't care where it is. He makes sure to represent the Arkansas second jurisdiction with class and with distinction. Brothers and sisters, would you help me welcome to the podium on tonight the leader of this jurisdiction, the leader of Arkansas Second. Come on, let's hear it for Bishop Frank Jefferson Anderson Jr. Come on, let's hear it for him. Dreams of our life now is sweet and my joy is complete. I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. If you're saved, look at somebody and tell them, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. Tell them I don't care who knows it. Tell them again, I don't care who knows it. I'll shout it from the rooftop. I'll go downtown and tell them I'm saved. Oh, they go see them and find that time. If they give me a neighbor, if they give me a spot on the television, I'll tell them I'm saved. somebody that's close to you, if God has done anything for you, would you find somebody to testify to them? Praise the Lord and thank God for his goodness and for his mercy. 
as all the officers that they would stand, all of our superintendent administrative assistants, amen, would you all stand then? Amen. All of the state people, would you stand? All of our state people. Amen. We certainly want to thank God for our Ames chairman tonight. Praise the Lord. Come on, give it up. This is a job. It's a job working to get these, these meetings going. I think Brother Thad might want to come back, want to come back to him and never mind. <laughs> Amen. Because getting everybody on the same page is a job. Because people got different things going and if you're not careful, it can frustrate you. It can frustrate you when you can't get people, to, amen, and you know, we we got, we got, what is this? We have a conference call, and it's hard to get folk on conference call. We, we used to could get them to drive 50, 60, 70 miles, but we don't do that anymore. We get on a conference call, and well, we ain't gonna talk about that, but uh, praise the Lord, we'll do better the next time. Praise the Lord, amen. We thank God for, um, all of our administrative Choir. assistants are going to give them a hand. Musicians. All right, all right. Praise the Lord. Now, all of you that did not stand just a few minutes ago, um, we call all the title-holding people. Now, you that's not holding titles, I want you to stand. Amen. That's right. Amen. All over the room. Great people. sit down and give them a hand. Because if it was not for them, there would not be an us. Praise the Lord. I thank God for the church of God in Christ. God is so good to us. Amen. This is another year. God has carried us for another year. Amen. Look like everything is just moving so fast. Time is just, time is moving so fast. And, uh, someone asked me the other day, just the other day, when am I going to get some rest? I said, January the 1st. And then I will start all back over again. There's so much going on, praise the Lord, but we signed up for it. Amen. When we joined the Christian Jubilee, amen, we signed up to work for the Lord. And when we're not busy doing this, we're busy doing something else. And I praise the Lord for his blessing in each one of you. Amen. We're looking for God to do super great things this week, phenomenal things. And if you want God to do phenomenal things, you have to do phenomenal things for him. I found out, I found out through the word of God, studying the word of God, that I can have whatever I ask for. Amen. You know what I've been asking God for lately? Amen. Just health. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. When you don't have health, your wealth don't do you no good. We are people who squander health to get wealth. Then once we get wealth, we squander wealth to get health. And then all we end up with is a grave. Amen. And then... The thing is that we do it and then we start it all over and our children. And then the cycle starts over and over and over. But I thank God. I thank God for the, the grand old church of God in Christ for the teaching. Brother preachers and sister missionaries and mothers, let's not get away from the teaching. It is the teaching that brought us to where we are now. And we don't want to get here. We don't want to get to this point in, in the church. And, and lose out. Amen? Because if we don't teach our children, there will become a generation that don't know God. I'm not talking all so much about the church, but teach them about God. Because if you teach them about God, amen, the church will take care of itself. Am I right about that? I just love the Lord. I love what God is doing. I love what He's doing in the life of His people. Amen. I went to my primary care doctor the other week couple of weeks ago and blood pressure was good and cholesterol was good blood work was good complete praise the Lord and, and, 
amen. And then I went to my urologist and, uh, amen, my PSA 0.0.0. .0. So uh, I'm doing good and I praise the Lord for him. Amen. I went to the dentist today and all these that's left for good. Praise the Lord. Amen. No cast is it? No. Praise the Lord. Amen. I feel I got about $10,000 worth of work in my mouth. But uh, told sister, that's when I pass, I asked for my head. <laughs> I praise God for the blessings of the Lord for what God is doing. Thank God for all of our workers, all of our state aims, personnel that's working throughout our jurisdiction. We can't do what has to be done by ourselves. I thank God for the setup that we have in the Church of God in Christ. There need not, we need not work for anything, but the thing is we have to, we have to make sure this is it's in place. We have things for the children, all the way up to the golden age. But it has to be in place. And I thank God, I thank God, I thank God. Amen. For the young men of our church. For the young women of our church. Praise the Lord. And we have to make sure, we have to make sure, we have to make sure that we're teaching them. Because we're going off to sing. We're going off to sing. These, all of us that you see up here, one day the young people are going to be the bishop and the superintendents and the pastor. We didn't come here to stay forever. Is that right? Amen. Praise the Lord. When you start getting up in your seven, as you start having pains, you didn't have at, at 65. Praise the Lord. You know, don't jump out of the bed. Don't jump out of the bed like you did a few years ago. Thank the Lord you can get out the bed. <laughs> but I thank God for his goodness and praise the Lord. I was, <laughs> I, uh, Sister Addison, the, Sister Addison was, at a, was at a hotel and she got too close to the end to the bed. And uh, she started falling out. I said, what are you doing? She's not falling out of the bed. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing that for. <laughs> so, uh, amen. I want all of you get so get so in God. Get so in God. Don't hang around where you got in. It's like the little boy that fell out the bed. Somebody asked him, said, "What happened?" He said, "I, I guess I was too close to where I got in." So, so, so. Amen. When you get saved, get over in God. The saints of God years ago said, so get way down in God. Praise the Lord. God bless you. And the blessings of the Lord as we move on. Amen. Thank God was, for the uh, young people. Cherry, he thought he's a godly man. He's a family man. He loved Cherry, amen. He spent time with, amen, not only with his children, but our children too. He get out and he play with them, he run with them, and, amen. And I think so Smith I'm about to run him down when he get home. But we want you to get ready tonight, amen, to hear this man of God. As I say, he is the pastor of True Vine, amen, doing a wonderful job at True Vine. And y'all awarded his vision before he left. His the dream was that True Vine would go on and would carry on, amen. So God has placed Ella Smith and Sister Smith there with their family. They start out just themselves. And God is doing a, amen, a great job there, amen. Souls are being saved. So we want you to put your cup out tonight. Amen. And, and receive what God has given to this man of God. Amen. I'm proud of him. Amen. He's a go-getter. So we want you to put your cups out tonight. And after the choir, amen, have given us, amen, the selection. We want you to stand and receive this man of God. And there's none other than, amen, and Elder Andrew Smith. Amen. Give him a hand. Amen. The choir is back.
Father, we become grateful before your throne. Ask you, Father, that you would hide me behind the cross, that they may see Jesus. Lord, I'm asking God that your Holy Spirit will come in now. That Andrew will be removed, but your spirit will take charge. Lord, you give me a word, oh Lord, let it be for the church. And God, I thank you right now, Lord, for this opportunity. And I'm asking you, Father, that you would bless in this house, oh Lord, according to your word. Lord, we just give you praise and honor. In Jesus' name, we thank God. Amen. Amen. I, I was in, you may be seated. Amen. While I'm talking, will you get Ruth, the first chapter, Ruth, the first chapter. I was in the hallway, and a young man wasn't talking to me. He was talking to someone else as I was walking by. He said, well, I can tell you this, we're going to be here way after 10. I said, well, young man, I'm preaching. And uh, I don't think I'm going to keep you that long. He said, well, I wasn't talking to you. I was not. Amen. So... Amen. We give honor to God tonight. Amen. And to his son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen, I, I, I thank God for bishop and bishop and superintendent, 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 superintendent. Amen. Elder, elder. Amen. Mother, mother. Missionary, missionary, missionary. Amen. I thank God for all of you. And we'll get that out of the way very quickly. Amen. So we can move on with God's word. Amen. So, amen. If you, do you have Ruth, the first chapter? Amen. I, we're going to get on into the word. I'm not going to stay here with no preliminaries. We're going to do what God sent here me to do. Amen. To bring a word. Amen. Amen. We thank God. Amen. We're going to bring you a word. Amen. Do you have Ruth? Yes. Amen. The first chapter? Yes. I don't know about y'all, but over at True Vine, we like to stand up. Amen. For the word. Amen. But you know, most of all, and I thank God for my wife. Yes. Amen. Some of y'all probably don't know her, but amen, that's my wife right there. Yes. Amen. Amen. Y'all probably know her because if you've seen me, you've seen her. Amen. Because we stick close together. Amen. Because, listen, I'm her covering. Amen. So, so I keep her close. Amen. We thank God for a few of True Vine people being here. Amen. There's my daughter back there in the back. Amen. We thank God for her. Amen. There's my nieces, amen, my little sisters, amen. One of the church members, amen. We thank God for my sister. I thank God for women. Listen, I didn't know men come. I got some men, y'all, but didn't know men come. But but the women said, listen, we go, Pastor, if you drive and we going. Amen. So I loaded all the women up in the car. Amen. So we thank God, amen. They're here. Amen. So we're gonna read to you Ruth. Amen. The first chapter. I'm gonna read the first six verses. Now it came to pass, in the days when the judges ruled, that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went out to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife was Naomi. And the name of his two sons was Malon and Chilion, Ephrites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of women of Moab. The name of the one was Oprah and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years. And Malon and Chilion died also, both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she rose with her daughter-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearing and reading of God's word. I want to talk to you a little bit tonight about choices. I'm going to talk a little bit about choices. We have to understand that life is full of choices. Matter of fact, everything you do is a choice. If you choose not to choose, that's a choice. We all make choices. 
choice. I thank God that back in the, in February of 93, I made a choice. Now, now listen, I made a choice to be saved. I wasn't like a lot of you all. I, I grew up in the church, but I never proclaimed salvation because I never really got saved. I, I, I came to the altar, yes, but, but I didn't get saved. Amen. Because I went out and did my thing, and then when my thing was done, then I got saved. I'm going to tell you how I got saved. I know I got saved because I drank, I smoked, I cursed, I lied, I cheated. I did a lot of things, but when I got saved, the Lord delivered me. I knew for a fact that I made the right choice because I tried to quit smoking on my own, but I couldn't do it. I tried to quit drinking, but I couldn't do it. But when I found and made the choice to receive Christ as my Savior, I made a choice, and that choice was final. I haven't had a withdrawal yet. Run 
from positions. <laughs> Bishop, it used to be elders flowing in the church. Every church used to have elders. We all, there was el Listen, I came out of Portland, Oregon. We had 17 elders. We had elders. There used to be elders in the church because they wanted the position. They wanted God to elevate them so they can lead God's people. But now we can't find elders in the church that want to lead because they're running from the position. And then y'all want to fuss about women being overseers. We can't find no men that's going to go in there and take the position. Listen, back then he had, the wife had to go with him. She didn't have a choice. 
Now we got that choice, women, that if he ain't following God, I ain't going to follow him. But back then, Naomi didn't have a choice. Naomi had to follow Elimelech, and them boys went with them. But you know what happened? God let Elimelech die in Moab out of the will of God as a testimony against him. To let him know, you made the wrong choice. You should have made a different choice. You made the wrong choice. So you're going to die in Moab. But then, while he done died in Moab, his sons, they followed in dad's footsteps. They told me I was going to be just like my daddy. They lied. They lied. My dad ain't nothing like me. My dad, my dad is in the world. I'm not. My daddy never found this side. Amen. But listen, his sons followed in his footsteps. Why in the world it said that when, when dad died, they continued there? Why did they stay? Why did they just take mama and say, mama, let's go back to the house of bread. Let's go back. But no, they followed after daddy's footsteps. They took them women of Moab. Listen, and I'm going to tell you something. They followed their daddy out the will of God. They got out the will of God. And so now they're doing the thing that's out the will of God. And that's why some of our sons and daughters are messed up right now. Because we went down to Moab. <laughs> yes, y'all, we had a little trial. Yes, we had a little storm. We, we went, we went, and got out of the will of God. That's why we done messed our family up, saints. We messed up our sons and daughters because of what we're doing. I'll tell you something. There's some folk out of the will of God right now. That's right here in the church. Moab is right here. They, they didn't have to leave. <laughs> they stayed right here with they out of the will of God. They, they brought Moab right here. They, they stayed here with Moab. Listen, let me tell you something. The reason these children and, and we have family and seed that are dying because they heard what we did and talked about the church. Amen. We right here in the church and we talk so bad about the church. We go home and we talk bad about the church around our children and guess what? They hear every word we say. They hear it and they take it in. And they let the interest is pumping in their mind. Daddy, all this going on in the church, amen, we talking about the church to the wrong folk. Amen. If I got something to talk about, I need to get along with Bishop and say, Bishop, I, I, I need to talk to you about something. And me and Bishop can talk about that. Me and Bishop can talk. I don't need to be talking to my family, my children. I don't need to talk about my cousins, about what's going on in the church. That stuff take you out of the will of God. Listen, the Bible says, touch not my anointing. I do my prophet no harm. So why are we talking about the pastors? We going home. Telephone. They messing your mind up. 
not choose the house of bread, choose the church, they choose rather to stay in the way. Because you don't talk so bad about the church. Listen, they heard you talk bad about the church. They don't want no part of the church. They can't get past, guess what? Your church hurt. Church ain't done nothing to them. But you done put your church hurt in your children, in your friends, in your family. They, they do it with your church hurt. The women won't come to church and go, no, they told me that pastor down there, he didn't hit on you. Pastor wasn't hitting on you. He was trying to help you. Did anybody want to hit on you in the first place? Daughters are dying in Moab. They're dying out of the will of God. Want me to tell you why? They took you. You took them there in the first place. They dying now because you took them there. The devil didn't take them. You took them. When you are out of the will of God and you take your family out of the will of God, that makes all of you out of the will of God. But they following you. But listen. Listen what happened. Listen what happened. While we down there dying in Moab, the Moabites are coming out of Moab. Guess what? They go in the house of bread. Because right here it says, while they were down in Moab, the country of Moab, they heard in that country that the Lord had visited the people and given them bread. So we got Moabites coming into the house of the Lord. Listen, they, they coming out of the will of God. They get into the will of God. Listen, that, 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 that used to be a time when other denominations they come over here. They would come over here to receive the Holy Ghost. That, that was a time when, when, when they heard about, listen, people getting healed over in the church of God in Christ. So they were coming over to the church of God in Christ. They heard that people were getting delivered over in the church of Christ, God of Christ. So they was coming to the church of God in Christ. They heard that people were getting saved over there. So they was coming over to the church of God in Christ because of what they heard was going on over there. Yeah. Mm. Y'all 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 remember? Listen, I'm a, I'm a little older than what y'all think I am, but I grew up in the '60s and the '70s, and. We have revival seem like every day. I'm thinking, when is Elder Gilmore going to ever stop having revival? He has a revival. He has a revival that's going to spring this week. The next week he wants us to come to Prescott. Then we have a revival in Prescott all week. Then he wants us to go over to Sweet Home. Then he wants us to go all over here. He, he was always in revival. Y'all don't feel This might, this might, this can help you out. Those revivals weren't for us. They weren't for us at all. It was for them. It was for them. Do you remember in the revival who were the people coming to the altar? I don't know about y'all, church, but down in Gun Spring, they got we had we had the Baptist folk, the Methodist folk. They were all packed in the church for the church got Christ folk to get in. Now there were so many of them already in the church. Because they wanted a touch from God. They weren't the ones they were having a revival for. They were having a revival for those that were coming out of Moab, that were coming out of the will of God, into the will of God. They were coming so they could get healed, they could get saved, and they could get filled with the Holy Ghost. Y'all probably gonna sit down. Yes. <laughs> oh, now we down in Moab. Acting like the bull bites. <laughs> we acting like them. We look like them. We talking like them. Y'all know we used to stand out? We used to stand out. 
Because guess what? We act like, we look like, and we talk like we were sanctified. We act like we, we were act like we the people know we were from the church of God in Christ. Because you act like you were from the church of God in Christ. They, they, they knew it. They knew it because you stood out. You stood out, but now we down in Lord, we out of the will of God. They don't know us from nobody else. But we live just like them. We fit right in. They, they don't know. They don't they can't tell. They can't tell. They, they look at you and say, Listen, you say Your soul is the most important thing. If you lose your soul, you don't love flows because God is in control. A church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Word Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. Sunday evening Pentecostal service, 7 p.m. Midweek service, Thursday,